Let's just sip it very carefully now. The most important thing for any nurse to realise when she comes on to a paediatric ward is that children are different and that you can't treat them like adults. Right. Paediatric nursing and adult nursing are not the same thing at all and you're not just nursing the child. You are nursing or looking after the whole family. You can't isolate the child from his family. Nurse McCarthy, can you come for a port, please? Can you come for a port, please? Can I pass you this? And if you could all look and see which group of patients you've got. So that when we're doing the report, you know which was which. The child needs to identify with somebody. He's an asthmatic. If he's got his own nurse, he feels important. He feels somebody cares about him, somebody belongs to him. And obviously for a student nurse, it's much easier for that nurse to come to terms with basic caring if it's with a small group of children. The emotional support is as important as the continuity of physical care, particularly in a children's ward. And he's developed a viral meningitis from the mumps. It's fairly common. We try to anticipate, you should be able to anticipate everything that happens, is going to happen to a child during his time with us. Thank you very much. On top of him. And tell him what it is, what's going to happen to him in terms he understands. Encourage him to ask questions. Just observe him afterwards to see if he's taken it in. If he's suddenly become very anxious, go back and encourage him to talk about it. And very often listen to the things that he says to the other children. Special, re special request. Sure. Gas. Let's go. Bye. Oh, well, you've got butterflies. I wasn't here. When a child arrives on the ward with his parents, we greet them, calling the child by name. So I think that's important. Yeah. Here we are, a green one next to a boy. Take both the, boy? the parents and child along to a bed, making very clear that it can be their play area. Yeah. You know, they can do what they like. It's not just a place for going to bed. You know, this is your base. Now, what I'll do, I'll give you this little thing that just tells you about visiting, etc. Um, then, at that point, we have got a booklet on the ward that explains about who everybody is and gives a little map of the hospital. Give one of them to the parents to let them read. Tari can just wander around so you can see where everything is. And there's no need. We won't do anything horrible to him. <laughs> now, it's free visiting to you, your husband, and his brothers and sisters. Yeah. I'll let you unpack, sort yourself out. Yeah. And one of the nurses will come and have a chat with you. Yeah. And with Tariq, mm -hmm. in about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yeah. You're not in a rush. Then usually leave the child and parents together, just to get the feel of the ward, uh, for about half an hour, just so they just get established. <laughs> After that time, we come back and do what we consider our formal admission. Where a nurse sits down with the parents 
and discuss the child, his personality, the sort of things he likes with regard to names for toilet, food he intensely dislikes, maybe allergic to. It's important to find out the drinks he likes if it's child is going to have an operation so that you don't give him something he intensely dislikes and start him off vomiting when he comes back. You know, things like that are important from the medical point of view as well. And he didn't have anything else to eat after, you know. Yeah. But he eats meat, you know, yeah. for a diet. No, 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 no meat. No. He doesn't eat meat, yeah. yeah. He'd be at home. If it's something that a mother is worried about, if you tell her a child is going to have an operation unexpectedly, perhaps she just thought the child was coming in for some treatment. If it's frightening news, the chances are the mother will forget at least 75%, probably nearer to 90% of what you tell her. So you have to go back, repeat exactly the same thing in exactly the same way. Never give an injection to a child. No, only to an adult. Well, it's, you just have to tell the child the truth, telling it will hurt. Most of the nurses have, have met a child at some point. So they have a vague idea of what a child is all about. But I try to explain a child's world is different. It's very much at this moment in time. It's a day-to-day -day thing. It's what's happening now. They may talk about the future, but they have no real understanding of the future, as we know it. And a child's world is very black and white. There's no greys at all. So that's one thing that you're either for him or against him. And something happening now is what's important. It's no good saying, in an hour, you'll be better. In, in, in an hour, you won't mind or when it's all over, you'll forget about it. You must actually look at what's going to happen and, you know, come to grips with it as something that's going, that's happening right now. Always telling the children the truth. Never promising them anything that isn't going to happen. Never blackmailing them. Because that is one of the favourite things people do to children. If you do this, or if you are a good boy, I will give you that. It's total honesty. Right, Mark, you can quit now. All finished. Good boy, aren't you? Okay. Mark, get out. You said, oh no, John's in there. He's coming the tree. John's in there. He's coming in the tree. Bye. As a play lead in a hospital, I think play is important because it has a link with their home environment. And when they come into hospital, they're separated from um, their home and their family and their friends and play can be very valuable because it can be reassuring bringing some normality to their life although they're in a rather strange and sometimes very frightening environment D, G, E, C A ward that is not allowed any play activities, well, I always feel the ward um, is cold. And the children themselves um, are going to be, I would say, unhappy. <laughs> we have to um, look at the child as a whole person, not just looking at a child's leg or arm and we have to look after the child's emotional needs. A situation has never arisen where a doctor couldn't see a patient because of the chaos, or an instruction the doctor gave couldn't be passed to the nursing staff because it's organised chaos, I think. Who's vegetarian? Two. If we've got a child on the ward whose mother doesn't visit very frequently, 
and when she is there, can't provide any positive caring. I usually try to allocate that child to the same nurse for more than one day. Every day that nurse is on duty, he is the child that is allocated to her. The nurse obviously would have more than one child to look after. But I would recommend that she spends any spare time she's got with that child. She's always aware of him. She always tells him exactly what she is doing, where she's going. And unless it is something that must be done here and now, if she notices that that child is becoming miserable and unhappy, that she drops what she's doing, even for a few minutes, and goes back. When do you have finished it? Some people could say that's a bad thing because the nurse gets emotionally involved with the child. So I think it balances out. For the child, it's a good thing. And that's what we're there for. Rhubarb, pie and custard are semolina and jam. The children's ward, oh, it's very happy and very friendly. I think that was the first thing that hit me. They were, most of them were dressed. Um, even the children in the attractions, they were dressed. And it, it didn't see, it seemed more like a play school, to be honest. It didn't seem like a hospital that I thought it was going to be. Whenever I've come in, Nick's always been playing with somebody. Are you? When are you going home? Do you think tomorrow? I don't know if this particular ward being a children's ward is different from any other ward, but for a six-year-old, etc., I think it's a great advantage having somebody, you know, a great deal more friendly than they used to be in the nurses, and um, the free and easy attitude about this visiting that you can visit the children basically any time, which I think is very good. I believe that the best person to look after a child is his mother or father, if he's filling that role. And the best, best place to look after the child is at home. So therefore, I think it's our duty to maintain as much of that home atmosphere in hospital as we can, while trying as nurses, therefore professionals, to get the child home as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. So from the ward point of view, then it just automatically follows. The parents must have free visiting. They must be able to participate in everything that happens to their child, unless it would endanger the child. There are very few procedures. In fact, I can't think of any one that a mother or father couldn't be present in the ward. So the mother or father should be present if they can, and particularly on the under fives, if either mother or father could stay at night, so provide facilities for them to stay. I know it may seem the wrong way around, but I often think by relaxing the parents very often first, you very often get through to the child through the parents, and that way the child feels, the child relaxes. It's relaxing the muscle all the time. It's the movement that makes it ache sometimes. So you wouldn't be able to move it while it's in traction, okay? It's very easy to pick out the priorities, no matter how busy or confusing it looks to an outsider. So I like people to feel that they can come to the ward whenever they want to. For the children, really. So they feel happy, they feel at home. People are relaxed. People coming into the ward aren't antagonized by somebody saying, you shouldn't be here at this time. The children pick up people's moods very, very quickly. And if doctors march in, or nurses march up to a child in a very aggressive way, the child just backs away from them, won't communicate with them, and gets very frightened, and very often takes it personally, think it's something they've done. And that's why I try and keep it free and easy atmosphere because everything that happens in the ward affects the children. It affects their parents. People can come and go to themselves. I try to keep it that way. Hello, Sarah. I think I was with Wendy when the accident happened. And it's just possible that he feels a bit still feels a bit guilty, I don't know. But definitely the mother is laughing and smiling much less now than she did a week ago. And I don't know if something's cooking. If there's something that we're doing that she's not happy about, 
or if it's just the strain of visiting hospital every day for long periods is telling. I don't know what it is. Terence Mooney is nine years old, left irritable hip. He's still on traction. Mr. Consor came to see him today. is very happy with him. There isn't any spasm left now, but said to keep him on traction until Saturday and then to take him off. Nicholas Hall is 10. Today he went down and had a right orchid epoxy. He absolutely fought having a post up when he came back. But at six, we finally persuaded him. And he had one. Five milligrams, very small amount, really. Anyway, he's tolerating small amounts of water. His mum is with him. She has been since he came back. Tariq Ali, was seven, went down for a left herniotomy. Came back at four. His parents have been with him ever since he came back. He's fine. He's on small amounts of water now. I think it's very important that children should be admitted to children's wards. Adult wards are not very satisfactory for children. They may see things that upset them, the whole ward is not geared for their care, and it is more important that they should be in an atmosphere that is suitable for them. I think there is uh, a possibility of, uh, for teenagers of having some choice, uh, but uh, young children should always be with young children on, on a proper children's ward. If there's one golden rule, I should like to think that it is that the children are not our children, but the parents' children, and we need to involve the parents in the care and treatment of children in hospital as much as possible. Play is very necessary in an outpatient's department. It's usually the first place that a child comes to in hospital. This is one of the most important things for hospitals to realize, that a play area can be set up anywhere. You just need a large cardboard box and good equipment, and preferably somebody who can be there with it. And that's all you need. So you can hear you. That's right. Okay. Let's come with me. Yes. No. You'll stay with me. My mama goes down there. She's got the other book. All right, fine. Take it. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Have a good journey down? Yes, we did. It's a bit tired. Yes, I'm sure it is. She looks tired. She's ready for bed. She's very tired. Yeah. Oh. Be glad to put her down, actually. Yes, well, I can show you her bed in a minute. Are you going to be living with, in with her? Um, yes, I am, actually. All oh, right. Well, if you'd like to come to a cubicle just down here on the left. To me, parents are... You have the child, you have their parents. They're not, they're not separate. They are, they are together. And um, we're not just treating the child. We, we're, well, we're involving the parents in the treatment of the child. So I suppose in that way we are cre trying to create an environment that's near uh, home-like by getting the parents to stay there. Probably just the clock actually, because I can feel the motor still going. I feel that the parents should be there as much as possible. It doesn't worry me, it doesn't prevent me doing my work. In fact, it helps. Just got to write in that column what she's actually doing at those times, oh, I see. and then symptoms if she's been having any of those strange attacks, oh. and just write none down there if she oh. seems quite well. Mm. Now, oh. and this is exactly what they did. Since they could no longer tow that gum drop without wheels, they left him by himself in the field. We try to. In create an environment that is like somewhere that's familiar to them. Not really to home, because that isn't completely possible. We can make the place a little bit homely, but more like a nursery school or like their ordinary day school. You're better than I am, I think. Perfect. Meet me again. Come on, have another go. Let's see. All right, let's try. I don't like to be defeated, do I?
Most adults, they know what's going to happen. They're frightened because they know. Children are frightened because of what they imagine is going to happen. They don't really know. <laughs> Children don't talk about their fears in the same way as adults. Um, but when they're playing, when they're playing their little doctors and nurses games, they they talk about operations and death. And um, a little girl came to me the other day and sort of said, "I know what they do when they take your tonsils out. They rip them out." And we had a long chat about taking tonsils out and how she wouldn't know anything about it and how it's not, they're not really ripped out. But, um, I mean, she wanted to be told that. She wanted someone to talk to her about it. You listen to them telling each other horror stories. It's very interesting about what's going to happen to them. And I think it's important for the nurse to listen to these things and to try and straighten them out. And talk to them. It's all right. Can you find it? I think so. Yeah. I think I am. And that tummy. Should we listen to her back as well? Yeah, I love that. Oh, that's it. Can you, can you listen there? I think this is this. I think that's a spare one. That was Elizabeth's one. Yeah. How is she? Is she getting better? Yeah, you can wear that one. All right. Thank you. When children come into hospital frequently, you've obviously got a very different situation because you do want to maintain the normal education of the child. Therefore, it's important that a contact is made with the school and the syllabus is kept to in some way or other. I think what the hospital teacher always does is to try and maintain a normal situation for the child. That's obviously very important for the child, uh, educationally and socially. Nurse, will it be all right if I go down the cliff, please? Yes, ma'am, certainly. And w would you pick me up in ten minutes' time, please? I should think I can manage that one for you. Thank okay. you. Okay. A quick peep into your ears. Oh, oh God. God. It doesn't hurt, Jamie. Yes. It doesn't. Just go and look in your ears. Just a quick peep, okay? No. Oh, yeah. Come on. We promise you it won't hurt. Mm -hmm. okay. You count to, t to ten and you'll, it'll be over. Stay still. You're Say very one, good. two, three. Don't take his teddy, Victoria. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There you are. Wasn't that quick? Oh, yes. Can we look at your throat now? Come on. No. Oh, oh my, show you, your you teeth. Say, you say, ah? Uh? Ah? Uh? Spatula, please. Ah? Uh? Oh, yes. Say, ah? Uh? Oh. Uh? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. All right, you just say, ah. Uh. Uh? Go on, try. Shout at me, say, Jamie. Uh? Say, ah? Uh? Uh? Try that again one more time. You look, no. look up. Put your head that's up. It. That's it. Say, ah. Good boy. Ah. Oh, that's good. Yes. Great. There's only one I want to ask you about, and that's um, Paul Clark. D&B. Yes. Is it D&B or...? The Liaison Health Visitor. 
goes on ward rounds and notes every child that's admitted to hospital and feeds that information back to the, own, the child's own health visitor. Um, mainly so that she can do an early visit when the child's discharged from hospital. She can also provide us with a lot of information about the child's home environment. So it won't get any better? It, it was ha she's been back and she's got her eye ointment and I showed her how to put it in. She came back yesterday? She came back yesterday, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But she had been having chloroform at home. Mm. She had, but it hadn't done any good for it, did it? I wonder if she was going to put it in properly. Well, I don't think she was putting it in properly, but I showed her. Mm. And I told her it was better she'd get someone else to hold baby's head. Yeah, that's You've been here before, haven't you? Oh. Hey. I think you take out shares in this joint. Yeah, me <laughs> too. You pop you into bed. Oh. Yeah, it's a factory, trying on battery because of the taste of the soap. That's a good bath. Come on. Do you want to stay, Bupa? I'll stay, yes. 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 Want me to stay with you, Alice? That'd be nice, won't it? It is most important that the children feel relaxed when they're in hospital. This is as important as their medical treatment and if they're in the right environment and feel relaxed and happy, then they're much more likely to make a quicker recovery. When I admit a child now, I make sure I know exactly what it eats and drinks, what it drinks out of, which is so important. To try to make the mother feel relaxed is another important thing, so that you get out of her all the strange little things. She likes the food. I mean, she, she won't she eat any vegetables. None at all. None at all. Ooh, Alice. Uh, except chips. And we potatoes. like chips. Roast potatoes and cold boiled potatoes, not hot, and chips. It's the same with the little things that they have, their little cuddly bits and pieces. I mean, some of them have the most strange sort of odd bits of mother's nighties and things that get furtively brought out of the shopping bag. It's much easier to get the child to do what you want if you have the parents there and or the brothers and sisters. You don't have to have special rooms for mothers to sleep in. We do put up camp beds in the ward and we can always find space for mothers or fathers to sleep. There's usually beds we can borrow from somewhere for them. We never have to refuse a parent. from you, John. Come out and do it. That's it. Come on in, mate. The ward atmosphere should be as relaxed as possible and one tries to treat them as near as possible to the way the mothers treat them at home. The child should never be made to feel that he or she has to stay in bed or that they have to get up and about in the daytime. In the end it comes down to this. Paediatric nursing is a very different thing from adult nursing. And when one's 
caring for a child. And it's not caring for that child only, but the whole family. And children should not be isolated from their family. Alice Weathered is a three-year-old girl who was admitted this evening. She is a little girl who has wheezy attacks. She's had several admissions here before. Um, she's had one dose of salbutamol by the nebulizer, and she's a lot better. And she's on amoxil. And she's drinking fairly well. Um, her pulse and respirations are a little bit elevated, if you could record them hourly overnight. And her, her temperature's normal, but if you could record that four hourly. Mother is living in with, with her. She's going to sleep in a bed beside her in the ward. We'd like a, um, an MSU from Alice in the morning, if possible. She's got a, a sheepskin rug there, which she always carries around with her, so cuddly. Um, Toby Ford was admitted at um, 6.30 this evening. He's a five-year-old boy. He ran into another child at school and banged his head and um, was thought to possibly be knocked out. He hasn't got a fracture. He vomited a lot of times. He hasn't vomited since admission and his observations are all quite normal. Um, so he can have clear fluids and if you could do hourly neurological observations on him, please. He seems to settle down quite well. Wayne Langley is 14 months old. He came in on the 21st with an upper respiratory tract infection mm. and pyrexia. That's and he's had these infections off and on for yeah. several weeks. Um, mother also pointed out that he was, um, when he got these infections, he 